I feel like Lana has just been dropping albums like nobody's business these past few years. Is it just me? Hey beans, what is up? How you guys doing? I hope you're doing well. And I know it's only been a few days, but for me, I can, like, it feels like I can say I finally am sitting down to listen to this album. I'm like four days late because my life has been crazy this past month. But we are listening to Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard in Lana Fashion. That is the title of the album. Per usual, I'm ready to just kind of hang out, chill, have some chill, confusing time with Lana Del Rey, me not understanding things. You know how it goes. I mean, Honestly, if we take a look at this track list, it's just, it's so, it's just, it's so Lana. It's so weird. It is. I mean, we have a lot of features. Um, most are artists that I have heard of, but don't know a whole ton about. As aside from Bleachers, I really do like Bleachers. Of course, we have Grandfather, Please Stand on the Shoulders of My Father While He's Deep Sea Fishing, which is... Like, I'm surprised, but I'm not. I'm definitely intrigued by the fact that we have Candy Necklace featuring John Bat Batiste. And then we have John Batiste Interlude. Am I saying his name right? Batiste. Batiste? I don't think so. Batiste. Batiste. Okay, why did this say Batiste? Obviously, I already know Ocean Boulevard and a and w, which was a whole trip in and of itself. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna start out with the first track on the album. It is called The Grants. It did already come out, but I have not listened to it yet. I don't know if I'm like fully mentally prepared for the fact that we are diving into a new Lana album right now. My brain is definitely not prepared, but we will do our best. We will do our best today. You guys ready? I'm not. One, two, ready. I'm gonna take. Hold on. What are we doing? Mine with you and me. Ah, mine. <laughs> Say it again. Mine Where are we? of you with, with me. me. Thank you. The way John Denver sings. Mm. This is pleasant. Oh, what is that coming in? Stop. I have questions already. So you say there's a chance for us. When oh, you leave my pastor. Discussing death. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take. Oh! Oh, that's kind of precious. Let's go with so much. I'm gonna take that too with me. Your sister's first. My grandmother's last smile. <laughs> oh. mm. Okay, Lana. One of the things I will always admire about her music is just how artistic it is. I mean, come on, you opened up with- I need to find out who this is, by the way. I believe it's just a choir of people singing this opening piece, and then, like, they make a mistake at the beginning. They were learning the chorus, and they made that mistake in the beginning. I snapped my finger, and I was like, Zach, snap that part where the melody tells everyone that they messed up, put it on the top of the song, because that's how the top of the album should start. There's so much symbolism there, because I like the naturalness of it. Oh, that's cool. And we're already talking about death. It's like a very religious kind of feeling song talking about heaven and like what happens when you die Which is you know one of life's biggest questions and the idea that you take your memories with you And she's saying I'm gonna take my memories of you with me and that was really beautiful But for some reason the bridge just kind of like oh it amplified that feeling of you know I, I take the memories of my sister's firstborn child my grandmother's last smile it's a beautiful life remember that too for me like oh my god just like the idea of taking all these memories with you throughout your life and then also when you die depending on i guess what you believe in i'm also always amazed by how lana's songs are always very long like she just makes long songs, but they never feel long. That was a five minute song and it didn't feel like five minutes at all to me. Um, I think a big part of that is because she delivers her lines very slowly. Like that's just kind of the nature of how her music is. It's very slow and drawn out. So that's probably part of why it never feels as long. As always, encore version of this album reaction will be over on Patreon for anybody who wants to check it out, along with the past couple Lana albums uncut and a ton of exclusive content. You can get these shout outs down here. I'm sending you guys postcards. There's a ton of stuff over there 
if you're interested, but if not, that's totally fine. But a massive thank you as always to everybody who has gone over there already because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this because Patreon is the only reason I can continue to do this every day. So to everyone who has gone over there, you guys are making my dreams come true and I really appreciate you for that. So thank you so damn much and let's keep going. Next we have Ocean Boulevard and usually I would listen through the songs I already know, but for the sake of this, I'm not gonna do that because this album is 17 years long and um, I just feel like I have reactions to both Ocean Boulevard and NW on my channel. So if you want to see those, they're on the channel. So next we're gonna listen to track three, which is called Sweet. I love when she hits me with pianos. I feel like I'm in church though. Stars in my eyes, hiking up Griffith. Guys, this album's gonna put me right to sleep. Oh my god. Huh? But I didn't send it. Oh, been there, done that? If you want some basic bitch, go to the Beverly Center and find I'm sweet. Whoa. I've got things to do like nothing at all. I want to do them with you. Ooh! If I'm not there, come to my house on Genesis. Sorry, I think I did just black out for a minute there. I just was kind of like in my own world. Lana wants us to know she's not like other girls. I love in the bridge, like, we've been making out a lot, not talking about the stuff that's at the very heart of things. Like, do you want children? Do you want to marry me? Are we on the same page? Are we going to work out long term? That's what that feels like right there, which is really just kind of pretty. I mean, this whole song is so pretty. Between the grants and this, I really just feel like I'm listening to lullabies and I just want to like float on a cloud and listen to these songs and kind of take a nap. But I want the songs to play in my dreams. Okay, so next again, a and W. I I have a reaction to that on the channel if you want to check it out. I'm just skipping it for the sake of the fact that it is seven minutes long and this is a long ass album. But next is Judah Smith interlude. I don't know who Judah Smith is. I don't know if we'll find out in the lyrics. I guess we'll just kind of see what happens. Oh my god. She's gonna hypnotize me right here, right now. Is that applause? Oh. I don't understand what that means. It means quit lusting after your paper. That's a heck of a lie. Does that sound like love? It's a life dominated with lust. This is actually scary. Is this a preacher? Like a pastor? So, as he works deep in your heart, is Lana at church, like with her phone whipped out and voice memos open, recording? That's where I am right now. Here's the verse of the day today, Bobby. Look at this. Look at the splendor of your skies. Jesus. Interesting little last couple lines there because I feel like that probably resonated with Lana in the creation of her music, right? I, you know what? Listen, I, I don't know. Um, this interlude is a recording of, of a Judah Smith sermon. This sermon touches upon many of the themes of the album and notably focuses on the difference between love and lust. That's true. All right, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really have anything to say about this. I like that last couple lines. It kind of lost me there many times. I'm sure artistically this is very symbolic and meaningful, but I would obviously skip this every single time it came on. I know I'm supposed to be trying to appreciate it for the artistic value right now, but I just, like, that's so many words that just were very aggressively being thrown at me. I felt very attacked. I'm just gonna let that go, all right? Cool. Let's get back to the music, hopefully. Next we have Candy Necklace. Candy Necklace, ooh. Why does that sound like just like a perfect Lana Del Rey song title? Featuring John Baptiste. Oh God, this album feels so dark. Cinnamon, 
cinnamon on my teeth. You've been acting pretty restless. It's like the young and restless. But this feels to me like her old music, like her first couple albums. I don't know. It really reminds me of her first album. So we feeling super suicidal. I to say the word, but baby, ain't on the Bible. I do feel like it's you, the one who's bringing me down. Yikes. All his candy necklaces. So haunting. This album is very haunting. Holy shit. Whoa. We're speeding up. Why is it so, like, scary? I forgot about you, sir. Oh, like the whispering coming in in the back is so cool. Whoa, his. Oh. Ho, ho. Jeez, sir. What are candy necklaces? Holy mother. I thought for a second like she was actually happy when she was saying like, God, I love you, baby. Storyteller, us forever is my favorite song. Candy necklaces. What are candy necklaces? Okay, I know what they literally are. In this context, the necklace represents the sweetness of carefree distraction through a triple entendre. First is the pull of youthful indulgence in play. Second are the sweet and sexual attributes of her counterpart attracting her to him. Suicide thoughts woven into the song suggest a third meeting, the sweet release of a noose to escape from her troubles. Oh. How does a person come up with that? I mean, that's just a, a genius contributor coming up with that, but I wouldn't be surprised if that was true because that just feels very Lana Del Rey. I really like this one. I love the second verse because of how dark it is, how sad it is. Just like her saying like, to this other person, you've been bringing me down. You're making me feel terrible and being around you is not good for me. Which is really sad, but it's gorgeously presented. And that outro, listen, a repetitive outro is either a hit or a miss for me. And this one was a hit with John Baptiste coming in. Their voice, ugh! Especially him right at the end, the last couple candy necklaces, like, or that are just him and that, oh. Oh, he has a great, like, deep kind of voice. I've never listened to him, but I've heard of him. This one, I like this one a lot. I already want to listen to this one again. Next, we have the John Baptiste interlude, which I'm interested to see if this is anything like our last interlude, because I hope not. Oh boy. What is this production gonna be like? It feels like it could be like chaotic. I already feel like there's a contrast of like. <laughs> Why is she putting jump scares in her friggin' music? Like this is her thing now. <laughs> what are we feeling? It sounds like they were all just kind of in the studio and they hit record and just did whatever the hell they wanted. Why did I actually really love that? We've got the two interludes, right? We've got Judah Smith and we've got John Baptiste. The Judah Smith one was just a man screaming at me. The John Baptiste one was like actually just felt more like a song. And it, it, like I would not skip this. I would not skip this when listening to this album because it just, I don't know, there's a feeling in it that like, I don't know, you hear like these little bits of vocals come in here and there and they sound great. And like, just, there's a lot of joy. You can feel a lot of joy coming through. And I think that's why like, I kept feeling very smiley because like, you just feel like John in this song is just expressing like, I feel it, I feel it. I feel it in my soul. And he just sounds like he's like having a good time, you know? <laughs> really what this sounds like too is like, they were just like in the studio, Lana and John and probably Jack and they're just kind of playing around and Lana said, you know what? That should be on the album. That's a very Lana artistic choice to make. That's just my guess. I, I mean, obviously I really don't have much more to say about it, but like, I really love it. It's just a chaotic little interlude, but I kind of adore it. Cause the, the instrumentation on it is gorgeous. Like obsessed with the production. Next we have a song called Kintsugi. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm hoping she kind of says it somewhere in the song. But also, I don't know what it means. We'll either find out in the song or after we listen to the song. There's a certain point Oh god, oh god, I feel like this one's gonna hit me. Chucky was there for three out of three. I was there for 
the third because I couldn't be. No, I just need to pause because I just. Oh. I feel like I can't breathe while she's singing. I don't know. I feel like I just need to sit perfectly still. This is already going at me. It's really just her vocals in the front here. Also, she brings up Chucky. I know she brings up Chucky on uh, Blue Bannisters. Is Chucky like a sister or a friend? I don't remember, but I know she's in Blue Bannisters as well. Just that I don't try. Ooh. Myself with my heart. I don't even know what we're singing about right now, but I, I want to let it break a little more. Ah! They say that's what it's for. Lana, shut up right now. This is my favorite one. Like, I already know that. <laughs> this is my favorite. A weak little whistle in the back? Daddy, I miss them. Uh -oh. I'm in the mountains. I'm probably running away from the feelings I get. <sighs> There's a name for it in Japanese. Oh shit. I'm sorry, but this is like my favorite one because it's so pretty. I, I looked up Kintsugi and then she actually did kind of tell me what it is there. Is the Japanese art of putting broken pottery pieces back together with gold? Built on the idea that in embracing flaws and imperfections, you can create an even stronger, more beautiful piece of art. That's so beautiful. Oh, I love that. And now of course, Lana's gonna take that and put it in the song because she hates me. This is how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in when you fall apart. The light gets It's how the light gets in. That's so not okay. Then you fold it. Then you're. I want the song to be over now. This is, I mean, oh my god. This is like peak Lana songwriting right here. I am obsessed with this, knowing, like, looking up what Kintsuki is. Like, Kintsuki is a thing already, and then, like, for her to take that and put it into the song and say, like, that's how the light gets in. When you break and you put it back together, the light comes in, fills those cracks, and it makes it golden, And because in Kintsuki you use gold to fill the crack. Ah! And I feel like it's the idea that you have to suffer in order to grow and become a better, more full version of yourself. So I feel like the first verse is like my favorite. No, the whole song is my favorite part. But the first verse is a certain point the body can't come back from. In one year, we've learned the turn of the mouth. The depth that the chest cavity takes. Chucky was there for three out of three. I was there for the third because I couldn't be... Lana's referring to the deaths in her family for which she couldn't be there for, including her uncle David Grant Sr. Oh, the Grants? Oh. I also found it interesting how in that first verse she does say, I can't say I run when things get hard. It's just that I don't trust myself with my heart. But I've had to let it break a little more. First of all, I love that. But also then later she says, Daddy, I miss them. I'm in the mountains. I'm probably running away from the feelings I get. So like she says she doesn't run when it gets hard, but then she says she's running away from her feelings in the bridge where it sounds like she kind of reverts back to a, a younger version of herself because she says, Daddy, I miss them. You know, like a, a child. Childhood. It's like she's trying to stay strong in the verses, but then like lets it go in the bridge and admits to being sad and running away and trying to cope. Oh my god! I love this so much. I need a tissue. Actually, I'm just gonna get the whole box. Guys, let me know if this is a fan favorite because it feels like it definitely is. It's my favorite so far. All right, damn. Okay, we'll move on from this, but I could talk about this all day. Next, we have a song called Fingertips. Okay! When I look back Dear God. Tracing We're... fingertips over plastic bags. Or do Ooh, build that. I don't know what we're talking about, but build it. Will I die? Will you be with me? Will oh my god. Lana, can 
we stop talking about death? She's going through it right now. Holy Jesus. I cannot believe that she just said, will the baby be all right? Will I have one of mine? Can I, can I handle it even if I do? It said that my mind is not fit or so they said to carry a child. I guess I'll be fine. Holy shit. See nothing great in it. Little whisper. Give me a mausoleum in Rhode Island with diagram of grandpa and <gasps> She said Rhode Island. In Rhode Island with diagram of grandpa and Dave who hung Dave. himself real high. Fuck, Lotta, shut up! If I take my lamp, find you. seconds to cry but sometimes it's just not your time i'm gonna throw up look at her she to say i'd end up in institutions give myself two seconds to breathe to breathe this time go back to being the serene queen oh my god a serene queen i just need it Two seconds to be <sighs> Oh, this woman, I swear to God, uh, this woman, th this woman. Well, all right, guys, I don't know what you want me to do with that. You could do an entire hour long video on just like dissecting this one song. Cause I felt so many things. First of all, not the Rhode Island representation that I was uh, looking for. I was excited and then I wasn't. I mean, obviously the recurring theme in this song is I just needed two seconds to cry. And then she says, I just needed two seconds to breathe. I just needed two seconds to be me. Like she's talking about all of these overwhelming moments that are, she just like needed time, but didn't have the time because she had to go back to being a serene queen because a lot is demanded of her. She just wants to be able to process things, but she never has time to. And like specifically we're talking about death. She's kind of going through like losing family members and how she didn't have time to process. I think like verse five, when she says, I couldn't handle it, I was in my Monoc- Why did I just forget how to pronounce that? I couldn't hear what they said on the telephone. I had to sing for the prince in two hours. Sat in the shower, gave myself two seconds to cry. It's a shame that we die. That sounds like she got a phone call that somebody passed away, but she had a job to do. She had two seconds to cry and then she had to get back to what she needed to do. And then like verse six, I wanted to go out like you swim with the fishes that he caught on Rhode Island beaches, but sometimes it's just not your time. I wanted to go out like you. What, what is that supposed to mean? Like I know what it's supposed to mean, but I just don't wanna say it. And she even says in the fourth verse, it's a shame and I'm crying right now to get to you, save you. If I take my life, find your astral body, put it into my arms, give you two seconds to cry, take you home, I'll give you a blanket. Your spirit can sit and watch TV by my side. I don't have the brain capacity to like go through all of this song, but God, this album really just deals with death in a lot of ways, in this song in particular. I also noticed in verse seven, she says, Caroline, what kind of mother was she to say I'd end up in institutions? When she says mother, it sounds like it almost like cuts out a little bit. It like, it fades out. You couldn't really hear what she said. I only know because I have the lyrics up in front of me, which is interesting. And I think I remember based on that line, it's pretty obvious, but I also remember like reading stuff back when I had listened to her other albums, like that she had a really bad relationship with her mother. So so maybe that's kind of like symbolic in a way to like not even give her the time of day, not even really say mother. Again, I could really talk about that song all day, but we'll move on just for the sake of the fact that we need to. <laughs> the next song is called Paris, Texas, featuring S-Y-M-L. I don't know who that is. Paris, Texas, is that an actual place or is this some kind of weird Lana thing? Oh my God, it's like a ballet already. Oh, this is so pretty and haunting and just great. <laughs> I went to Paris, Texas, with a suitcase <gasps> in my hand. Whoa, Melody, hold on. When you know, you know, it's time, it's time to go. Oh! Just a notebook in my hand, some friends of mine. I'm, oh! Gonna 
Woo! Why does it, like, in my head what I'm seeing is like a feather floating down from the sky with that kind of like back and forth motion, like that slow. I don't know why I felt the need to share that with you, but I guess what I see in my head is a feather just kind of like floating down. When you hold me Okay, cool. What? Like, oh, like, oh my god. I mean, this song actually feels like potentially one of her more straightforward uh, songs, just in the sense that it sounds like she's saying, like, I mean, in the same style of It's Time to Go by Taylor Swift, when you know, when you feel it in your bones, like, you know when it's time to move on. I feel like Taylor's It's Time to Go is very concrete and this is more abstract. Like, Taylor gives you, like, very specific examples, whereas this is just kind of that overarching feeling of, like, you know when it's time to move on. But that outro, when you're home, you're home. You're home when you're alone. And she's saying Venice, California under there, which I guess must be where she feels most at home. I don't know if that's where she's from. I don't know where she's from, but it sounds like home to her is Venice, California. I just realized too, this is featuring S-Y-M-L, but there's no other vocals on here. So who is that and what do they do? This song fully samples I Wanted to Leave by S-Y-M-L. Every part of the song follows the original? Let me see, hold on. This is, oh my god, it's not her instrumental. I didn't know that. I love this. I think it's a fully instrumental track. And so she basically just said, hey, can I use that and put lyrics over it? I'm obsessed with that instrumental. That's a really, 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 really gorgeous instrumental. And then you pair it with these lyrics from Lana. It's like, oh my God. Oh no. Next we have the grandfather song featuring R-I-O-P-Y, which I don't know if this is gonna be a sample or an actual like vocal feature. We'll find out. Too much for me. Some big man behind the scenes. So I'm Frankenstein, black dreams into my song. But they're wrong. Grandfather, please stand on the shoulders of my father while he's deep sea fishing. Regrettably, also a white woman. Regrettably, also a white woman. What? This might be my favorite in terms of the production. Damn, does this track build up. It's still a sad and slow song, but at the same time, I'm like, let's go. Okay, you know what? You're allowed to give it that title, that obnoxiously long title when the song is that good. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do it. So once again, this is a song features French pianist R-I-O-P-Y's instrumental track, Flow. Wow, this song just feels really deep, really beautiful, really strong. This is a strong song between the instrumental, the lyrics, her just kind of trying to say this is who I am and people don't believe me people don't trust in me people don't see the good in me like she's just trying to say I, I do have good intentions and a lot of people don't believe that a lot of people don't see that and I just think I don't know I just think this one's really gorgeous this one's really oh really really freaking gorgeous wait the next song is let the light in featuring father John Misty I think I know one song of his it has to do with going to the store or something like that but anyway let the light in that is a like repeating line in Kintsugi. So I wonder if that's all at all gonna connect or if that's just kind of coincidental, but that's what I immediately thought of when I saw that. A guitar. I feel like we've been so piano heavy that that guitar just took me off guard. Pick you up at home, quarter to three. Ask you if you want something to eat. Drive around, get drunk, do it over again. Don't drive around and get drunk at the same time though. At your back door, yeah, because I wanna oh. come in. Okay. Look at us, you and I back at it again. Look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? 
not me. I don't know how to describe the way this song's making me feel. I'm just like... Like, you know! Ah, oh, instrumental melodies. I have a good feeling in my heart with this song. Wow. That song just created a universe that I never wanted to leave. I felt so content in that song. The way it made me feel relates back to the line. Wake you up at night quarter to one, I can never stop, wanna have fun. Don't be acting like I'm the kind of girl who can sleep. It just kind of has that playful, fun, energetic feeling to it. That like it doesn't want, you don't want it to end. And it just, it feels very blissful. Especially, you know, in the bridge. I love to love you, hate to hate you, want to want you, need to need you. And then these little images moments put the beetles on light the candles go back to bed put the TV on the flowers in a vase lie your head. I don't know. It just feels really good I like father John Misty on it as well again I don't know a whole ton about him I only heard a, a song here and there a potential interpretation of the song follows the concept of the female singer having an affair with the male singer Yeah, pick him up quarter to three wake him up quarter to one in the middle of the night secrecy Okay. Yeah, I see that I see that it does have this like very youthful feel to it too that I I don't know how to explain exactly but I really love it. Oh my god. Okay next we have more Margaret featuring Bleachers, which of course is really Jack Antonoff and Jack works with Lana all the time. So the fact that we have Jack featured via Bleachers on a Lana song is really cool. I, I hope we actually get Jack vocals on this song. Whoa, it's very light coming in. Oh God, is this gonna end me? As if this whole album hasn't already. Oh no. This is a simple song. Gonna write it for a friend. My shirt is inside out. I'm messy with the pen. He met a woman on a rooftop. She was wearing white. Wait, this is cute. Okay, I already love. <laughs> The writing. I don't know. It feels very casual, which is not normal for Lana, first of all. And she's kind of talking some of these things. And I don't know who Margaret is yet. I'm writing it for a friend. He met Margaret. He isn't Jack, is it? With the subject matter of the track being Lana's friend, Jack Antonoff's fiance. <gasps> so he is Jack and Margaret is Jack's fiance. And you know, you know. Stop. Running down that path when you're good is gone. Words on my friends, but they're red flags, they're white knives, they're black eyes, and they're blue eyes. Thank you. The soul that you bring to the table, one that makes me say. Fine. Maybe tomorrow you'll know. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow you'll know. I'm gonna throw something. That's a nice bleachers esque outro right there. There's tears on my desk. Excuse me. Jesus, why did that song do that to me? It was a happy song. I don't know, man. That song is everything because I think it just had such a simplistic beauty to it about feeling of, of being in love when you know you know. And I think that's gorgeous. I mean, the part that really got me, which I feel like is very telling of my life, is the interlude. She says, I don't want to read it because I'll cry. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it for you. Ready? Here we go. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to go read it. So if you don't know, don't give up because you never know what the new day might bring. Maybe tomorrow you'll know. Maybe tomorrow you'll know. And then when she kind of laughs, she's like, I mean, join the party. By the way, the party is December 18th. 
Sorry, I'm a mess right now. I assume that's like the wedding date for Jack and Margaret. Something about this also kind of reminded me of Taylor a little bit. I don't know if it's just because, you know, Jack works with Lana, works with Taylor. If it was like the Jack coming through that made it feel a little more Taylor. But I, there's some like lines that she said in here. I was like, oh my God, that reminds me of something Taylor's done in the past and the writing style and everything. God, I just love it. Okay, next we're gonna listen to Fishtail. God, I'm such a mess, guys. I'm sorry. I think we've reached a point where like, I'm just gonna do my best for these last three tracks but I'm gone because holy jeez. Every single one of these songs has been so good. Track eight is where everything turned around for me. Up to track seven, like I was enjoying it, but I started obsessing over it at track eight. Fishtail, here we go. Don't you dare say that you'll my head, babe, if you don't really care. Oh, Fishtail Braid? You're so funny. I wish I could skinny dip inside your mind. Lately. Oh god, Jesus, help me. I like to watch them sway, you're so funny. I wish I could skinny dip inside your mind, a lyric. Also, swinging in a nightgown underneath the old oak tree. Why is swinging in a nightgown remind me of something Lana that's already existed? This line might be a reference to Lana's song, Hope is a dangerous thing for a woman like me to have, but I have it. I've been tearing up my town in my fucking white gown. <gasps> Maybe that's why, because that's one of my favorite songs. <gasps> song to end. Stop. What the- Why is there a duck here? But I've got things to say. I'm not that smart, but I've got things to say. Um me you know really we listened to margaret and i was like you know what that's it like that's the end for me because that was just my moment and then like from here on out we're just gonna just kind of what no that was everything to me because the production change up right before i freaking paused it too i was barely paying attention to the lyrics i can't even lie because like the production just took over like i just was feeling things like <gasps> like i think i was exercising a demon but like in a good way that's how it felt like it was good but there was a demon in there just kind of like waddling around because there was also a duck i just love that i don't know what it means but i don't really care because i just am so obsessed with the production aspect of it that like the lyrics i don't care she could be saying the freaking alphabet for all i know i just was the production what's next peppers of course next is peppers featuring tommy genesis I, I, another person i don't know i'm so sorry what is happening hands on your knees i'm angelina jolie hands on your knees angelina jolie let me put my hands on your knees me and my boyfriend listen to the chili peppers we read You know, just when you, you think you've prepared yourself for everything. Oh, hell yeah! Wait, that reminds me of the, uh, oh god, I'm gonna screw it up. The next best great American rec- next great- the best great- you know the, the song I'm talking about. What do you want me to do with this? Sorry, I keep pausing because I just don't know what to do with this one. I take off all my clothes, dance naked for the neighbors. I'm like, fuck it, gonna give a show. I open up the blinds. Joe Goldberg is gonna walk by and then you're screwed. So be careful with that. Like, take a minute to yourself, skinny dip in my mind, I'm in love. Skinny dip in my I'm mind? In Again? Now, 
<sighs> my brain, like the brain capacity. I don't know if that song was as weird as my brain is thinking or if my brain's just gone. Like, I don't know what just happened. I don't know how I feel about this one right now. Is this song just supposed to be like this chaotic feeling of like being in love? Just kind of this like, this is what it feels like. It's all over the place. And it's all like, she says like, she doesn't give a fuck. I threw caution to the wind. Just like, fuck it. Is that what this whole song is? I don't know about this one. All I know is that it happened and we were all here for it. So yeah, let's move on. We have made it to the final song. It is called Taco Truck by, Taco Truck by VB. Yep, whatever you say, Lana. I was really expecting to be upbeat. I think my brain's stuck on that Pepper song, so. Met my boyfriend down taco truck. You met your boyfriend at the taco truck. Caribbean blue, in sweater weather, I'm falling into you. Okay, moody, moody. I can be violent too. Oh. Oh. That's why they call me Lanita. They call you Lanita? They call you that? Let me stop what you say. I know, I know, I know that you hate me. Okay, that was cool. I don't know who I am anymore, actually. There's a spoken outro coming by Margaret! That's how you finish the album? Lana! I'm gonna throw up. Okay. No, I can't believe I- Well, I guess I can believe. Like, I saw VB. I didn't know what VB was. It was Venice, bitch. That sounded off bang, bang, kiss, kiss came in and I thought my life was over. I thought it was just gonna be that and then I was like, wait a second. This is Venice, bitch. Like, this is the song and she just did an entire different version to finish that. And interestingly, like, that little spoken word part ends with, um, anyway, I had this dream where, um, I, uh, I don't know. And then it goes into Venice, bitch. Like, that's the dream. I already forget how the taco truck part went. Oh yeah, she was like, they call me Lanita. Do, do they call her? Do they call her that? Oh my god, wow! I can't believe we actually just listened to that album because it feels like we didn't, but we did. I don't even know like where to begin because here's the thing. There are tracks on here that I could make an entire video on that I could talk about for six years. How do I wrap up my thoughts on this album? I don't know. To be honest, I've been listening to this album now for so long that I barely remember anything about the Grants or Sweet. Oh, I remember Judah Smith interview that... <laughs> Unfortunately, okay, so here's the thing guys when I first started listening to this album I wasn't sure I mean part of it was that I felt a little disjointed by skipping those songs and normally I would never do that Normally I will listen to the songs I already know to keep the context of the album going But because this album was so damn long and I knew the video was gonna be obnoxiously long I was like, I'm just gonna skip them. So that was like it was disjointed and like that Judas Smith interlude I was just like I don't need this. And then like the John Baptiste songs were really cool. They were like my favorites up to that point. But it was when we got to track eight, Kintsugi, that everything changed for me. At first, I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this album. I was like, uh, it's okay, it's it's all right. But I'm not loving it yet. Track eight, that's where everything changed. The second half of this album is every single track is something else. I mean, Peppers, it might not be my song, but it's very unique and very interesting regardless. And that last track, like sampling Venice Bitch that way, like it was so cool. Oh my God, the second half of the album. Let me know if like that's a shared opinion that everybody's having or if that's a me thing. I just think the second half of this album is just so good. I mean, I don't mean to leave out A&W and Did You Know There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard because obviously I didn't listen to those today, but I don't know. I just feel like the second half is so gorgeous. It's so like heart wrenching. You have a lot of a lot of themes of death on this album, like talking about death, like where do you go when you die and taking memories and like all of those things, like family members who have passed. And there's a lot of like suicidal type stuff on this album as well, which is, ugh. I don't know wh why Margaret had the hold on me that it did, but it, it just wrecked my soul. Guys, like I don't even know how to wrap up my 
thoughts on this album. At the end of the day, I love it. I wasn't sure at first if I was gonna love it. By the end, I'm like, holy shit. Like, Lana doesn't miss. The only track I could say I truly could do without is the Judah Smith interlude. That's the only one that I'm like, I don't need that. I, I don't know what else to say. I just feel really overwhelmed by this project in like the best way. And I'm so excited to go listen to it again. Um, I can't wait to sob to Margaret right after this because that was a fun time for us. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on this long ass Lana journey. That was so damn incredible. Ah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting over it. Thank you for being here. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>